Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks back with another After Effects tutorial for you. And I say After Effects, but if you are using Sapphire with Premiere Pro or with Avid or any of the other hosts that support Sapphire and specifically Sapphire Effect Builder, then this is a tutorial for you. I just got back from NAB Show 2017 and one of the demos I was doing for Boris FX was an advanced Sapphire demo. And I specifically covered the Sapphire Effect Builder. Now you may be using Sapphire and you have to be using Sapphire version 9 or above to access Sapphire Effect Builder. And you may have seen Sapphire Effect Builder and wondered what it was, or you may have applied it and dropped a few nodes into the workspace and tried to link a few things up, but not got the results that you wanted. So this tutorial, while it says advanced, really is about coming to grips with Sapphire Effect Builder. And I think by the time you've watched it, you'll have a really good understanding about how you can use it to enhance your workflow using Sapphire. Okay, so I'm inside of After Effects here and I've got three layers. The first is this highway layer, just some pre-composed stock footage. The next is this mask layer. And this is just a piece of text in a pre-comp with an alpha channel. It doesn't have to have an alpha channel. It could be a luma mat. And I also have this background layer, which is another piece of stock footage. So I can turn these off. I can lock them if I want to. And I'm going to click on highway. I'm going to come up to effect and choose Sapphire Builder, Sapphire Effect. And up here in the effect, I'm going to choose mask from layer, mask. And I'm going to choose background, background. I'm going to click on edit effect. That's going to launch Sapphire Effect Builder. And you can see here, I have preview selected node turned on. And just give myself some space here. I'm just using the right mouse button just to get this hand grabber tool so I can move around. I'm also using the wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so if I click on mask, we can see the mask. There's the source and there's the background. So let's just select the source. First of all, I want to apply rack defocus. So I've just typed that in, double click. And because I had the source selected, that just drops it straight below that. Just going to increase the defocus width. Now I want to use the mask as a mat for this. So I need to use the first of the tools that we're going to be using, and that's the cutout effect. Another way to apply an effect into the workspace is just to grab it and just drop it on a node, and that will drop it below. You can see this has a mat port. So I'm going to take the mask and patch it into the mat. Okay, good. So that gives me a standard track mat. I want an inverted mat, so I need to use the invert effect. So click on mask, type in invert, double click because mask is selected that inverts that to black. Now, if I click on cutout, you can see I have this inverted mat. Now I want to use the source a second time and have that be revealed inside these letters. So I'm just going to bring that across, get rid of background for a moment. And this time I'm going to use the color effect. This is another one of the tools. Just drop that in. I have snap to grid turned on, so that's going to help me keep things a little tidier. Just bring that across a little bit. Now, because I have previous selected node turned on, you can see with this selected, it's white. That's because the color is white. If I click it and choose this deep orange, that'll change that. And you can see it also combine is set to screen by default. So if I patch source into color, now we get this nice green orange. So now I want to add these two together. And to do that, I'm going to use the composite effect, which is another tool. Composite, click and drag. It's going to bring this guy up a little bit and zoom in. And you can see cutouts already patched into the front. I'm just going to bring color into the back. Okay, looking good. So next what I want to do is use the crop effect. And I want to crop all of this down to a nice strip. So with composite selected, I'm going to choose crop. Yet another one of the tools. Double click and just change the height. Just bring that down. And if I click on the animation button, and choose this upwards ramp and drag the end time back towards the beginning. That's going to animate up to this height value. So if we just come back to the beginning, 
and press play. There you go, we get that nice reveal. Okay, so what's next? So next I wanna composite the background into the background behind all of this. So I can do that using a second composite effect. So I'm just going to duplicate that first composite effect by right clicking and choosing duplicate and just drag it onto crop and that will patch that into the front. And I'm gonna take the background and patch it into the back. There we go. Next, what I wanna do is give this background a bit of a treatment. First of all, I'm gonna use the vignette effect and I don't wanna actually apply a vignette, I just wanna blur the edges. Sapphire vignette is great because it has a blur property. So I'm gonna bring opacity down to zero. So I'm no longer darkening it down, but I'm gonna bring up the blur amount just like that. Next, I'm gonna apply hotspots. It's kind of like uh, curves or levels. And I double click it, you can see it darkens everything down. Kind of nice for this kind of silhouette look. I wanna decrease the threshold just like that. And if we just uh, disable that, you can see a before and after. I'm just right clicking to choose disable and enable. Okay, so now clicking on composite two, we've got this look. Next, what I wanna do is add a white stroke around the text just to make that pop out a little more, which means we need to use the mask for a second time. The effect I'm gonna use is edge detect. I'm gonna click and drag that in because I don't wanna add it at this point, I wanna actually connect it this way. And you can see by doing that, I have a white border around that text. So now we wanna composite this again. I'm not gonna use composite this time. This time I need to use layer because layer has blend modes. Composite is very basic. It doesn't have any settings. It just has a front and a back. So if all you wanna do is just add layers by choosing a front and a back, just use composite. But if you need more flexibility, you come in and use layer or math ops or one of the other compositing effects. I'm gonna choose layer, drag that on. I don't want this to be composited into the front. I wanna bring that into the background and I want the foreground to be this text. Just like that. This is a little thick. So I'm just gonna click on edge detect and load a preset. I created a preset earlier where the edges are a little finer and I named it fine edges. Don't disregard the presets as well because they can really save you a lot of time. And you really should be making your own presets as well. You can see how much time that just saved me grabbing one I'd created earlier. Now I need to use the blend mode and of course I'll need to use screen for this. So with layer selected, I'm gonna choose mode, screen, there we go. So let's just do a quick review of what we've done so far. We've taken our source and we've defocused it. Let's just make a bit more space here. And we've used the mask inverted with the cutout effect to create an inverted mat. And then we've comped those both together. We've used the crop effect, which we've animated and we've vignetted just to blur that, not to actually create a vignette. And we've used hotspots and we've comped that into the background using a second composite node and everything else into the foreground. Then we've taken a layer effect and we've comped that into the background and we've used the mask a second time with edge detect and we've comped that into the foreground. So you can see we've already saved ourselves a few layers. We've used the source twice, we've used the mask twice and uh, we're not finished yet. So next what I wanna do is use the shape effect. I wanna crop all of this out using a circle. So I'm gonna type in shape. Just bring that down. And I'm going to load up a preset. I don't want a star, I want a circle. I tried making a circle just by playing around with the settings, but it was a bit tricky. So may as well just grab one that's already been created. And to cut that out, I'm gonna use the cutout effect again. Double click and just drag the mask and link it up to the mat. There we go. Click on shape and I'm gonna decrease or increase the size to the size that I want it to finish at. Click on the animation button and once again, use the upwards ramp and just adjust the timing of that. Let's just click on the cutout 
so we can see how that moves. Good. Okay, now we've got the sort of secondary animation. We've got the crop revealing the text, and we've got the circle or the shape revealing everything. Okay, so now I want to comp the source and the background into the background behind this. And I'm going to use an effect as a mat for that. To do the comping, I'm going to use the blend effect. Bring that in and drop it in. Now the blend effect can have a mat and a source A and a source B. So for the source B, I'm going to use the background, but I'm going to treat the background first. So let's just apply the blur effect and just decrease that and half tone. One of my favorite stylized effects. Now, before I apply that, you can see it's dropped it in the wrong place. I'm just going to disconnect that. It did exactly what I said you shouldn't do. And I had the layer selected when I actually double clicked it, which put it in the wrong place. So I want to do it this way. Just like that. Okay, now I can apply half tone and load preset. And let's have a look what we've got here. Something like newsprint looks good. I'm going to change the color. And just going to play around with the dot frequency. Just bring that down. And maybe just adjust the blur. Okay, so now I want to comp that into source B just by clicking and dragging. And I'm going to bring the source into source A. And this is what we get. So now we want to use another effect as a mat. I'm going to use the grid effect. Just drag that in and connect that to the mat port. Turn off preview selected nodes just for a moment. I'm going to click on load preset. Choose the pink stripes preset. Doesn't matter that it's pink. Just want to make sure I can see that. Uh, increase the box sizes. And I'm going to take the roll down to zero. And just decrease the H line well rel width to about there. And that's where I want it to finish. So once again, I'm going to animate that. Just have it finish a little bit later than the other animation. Okay. So now you can see this is what we get. So we're using the grid as a mat for blend and it blends them both together. Okay, so now we've got to bring everything together. And once again, we'll use the layer effect. So we'll duplicate that. Drop it onto cutout. And we like it in the foreground. We'll bring blend into the background. Just like that. And it's a duplicate. So this one's got screen mode set. I don't want that. So I'm going to choose normal. Just like that. And lastly, what I want to do is I want to add a white stroke around the edges of the circle reveal. So I can do that using edge detect, just right click, duplicate, bring that down here and pretty straightforward. Just right click layer again, duplicate, drop that in, bring that into the background of course, because I want edge detect to be in the foreground. So I'm going to use shape, edge detect, foreground, there we are, and just set that to screen. And there we go. And you can fine tune the animation and that's what we get. Okay, so just by going step by step, we've ended up making quite a complex set of nodes here, quite a complex tree. And before I did this tutorial, I'd really only used a few of those tools. I think I'd only used, um, I'd used cutout and I'd used crop and color. But just by bringing them in and linking 
uh, you know, effects to the source B and source A and the front and back. Uh, and just experimenting, I was able to really start to understand what they did. And hopefully this has accelerated your learning because uh, you won't have to uh, you know, experiment as much as I did. You can learn from my learning. So let's just click OK. And there we are. Now, of course, you can see that we have a lot of parameters in here. If you didn't know, you can inside of Sapphire Builder, you can create a custom effect by turning uh, off the parameters you don't want to see. Now, a bit of a gotcha here is I've got a lot of effects in here and there is a limit to how many effects you can actually use to create a custom effect. And you can see we get this little um, exclamation mark. So some of them doesn't allow me to even touch because I've used too many in here. So what you have to do is turn off the ones that you don't need first. So I'm going to turn off invert. I don't need any of the layer effects. Turn them all off. Layer, that's on, that one's already off, off. Shape, uh, I do want uh, the size. Edge to text, I don't suppose I need. Blend, doesn't matter anyway. Grid, probably the H line rail width. Cutout doesn't matter. I may have missed a couple here. Crop, just the height. And when you turn them off, it makes the other ones available. So hotspots probably want to have threshold. Half tone, maybe dot frequency and color. Blur, we still can't get blur in there. Um, vignette, I can just turn that off. And now we've got blur available. So it's going to be a little bit of compromise if you're using a lots, lots of different nodes in here. Click on blur amount. Actually turn them all off and just turn on blur amount. And we'll see if we've got them all. So I'm going to, of course, uh, before you do that, actually, you can actually save that as a preset. No sense creating something like this and not having it as a preset available to you when you need it. Uh, you could apply this you know, into another project and switch out the mask and the source and the background and still have all of these effects working correctly. And share this, if you were doing this in After Effects, share this with your editor and they could do that on the timeline, which is really handy. I'm just gonna cancel that and click OK. And I left Rack Defocus and Edge Detect on, but you can see that we have all of those other effects with only, only showing the parameters that uh, that we want to be able to adjust, which is great. Let's quickly just come in uh, and click on edit effect again. And you probably want to check this also before you save the preset. And rack defocus. Probably just want to increase the, or just check the defocus width. Okay, click OK. Okay, there we go. So we've got this really nice custom effect using lots of different effects, but only the parameters that we want to be able to change. In the finished version, I just grabbed, let me just grab this. It's a, an adjustment layer with um, halftone color, sapphire halftone color. And I use this just on top of everything and it gave me this nice sort of pixelated look. So this is sapphire halftone color. And the reason I did it with an adjustment layer because I, I applied it in the effect stack inside of Sapphire and I wasn't quite getting the look that I wanted. So I don't think it's a good idea to disregard adjustment layers, um, even if you're using the builder because they still can be very effective. So I hope this has been helpful if you're using Sapphire. The builder and the node-based effect compositing really is a fantastic time saver and I try and use as many Sapphire effects as possible so that I can use Sapphire Builder. It really did change the way I work with effects in After Effects. And I'm sure once you start to, you know, really get Sapphire Builder and understand how it can help you, then um, you'll really start to enjoy it too. But for now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.